All right, today we're gonna to be talking about counting complex rhythms. In our last video, we went through our rhythm tree and talked about how rhythms work and how they add up to bigger beats. And today we're gonna to talk about how to count through those rhythms when you add in some periodic rests or combined rhythmic values. Okay, so first we're just gonna start with a brief reminder of counting in our different rhythms. So starting first off with our quarter notes, we've got our numbered system counting on our quarter notes, which are also our downbeats. One, two, three, four. That is also where we're going to feel our beat in today's video, which just as a reminder is where you tap your foot. So we're gonna be tapping our foot along with our quarter note values. Now, as we add in our smaller subdivisions of the beat, first up is eighth notes. As you can see, I know this is a reminder and a refresher here, but our upbeats or our ands, I've gotten a different color. That way you can still see that our beat or our quarter notes and our downbeats are all still at the beginning of these beats. And just a reminder, that's where we're tapping our foot. And all we do is add an and on the upbeats. And taking it one step further, same thing, we've got our ones, we've got our ands, adding an ease and us with the other notes that come in to the 16th note groupings. And those golden numbers on our downbeats or where you tap your foot. Okay, so let's look at a rhythmic pattern with eighth notes and eighth rests that doesn't just follow a strict one and two and three and four and counting all the way through with an only wall of eighth notes. So first things first, let's put out our numbers and see where we're tapping our foot. Again, even with this array of notes, we're still tapping our foot on those beats and on those golden numbers that we see there. But if I were going to count this rhythm without the rests, I would look at where the rests fall and think about removing those syllables while still counting the rest. So rather than counting one and two and three and four and, if I was subdividing this whole grouping of notes, I would count this rhythm as one and and three and and. Tapping my foot helps to keep the beat along the way, but notice how two and four are removed when counting the rhythm because those are where my rests are. This sort of style of using the grid of counting methods and removing wherever you've got rests placed in or maybe you've got notes held out uh, is gonna be super helpful and it's how I attack any sort of rhythmic passages that may give me trouble. Let's look at a smaller scale with combined rhythms. So first off, let's look at our 16th notes. Again, one E and a. Uh is how we count when we've got grouped together four 16th notes. All four notes or partials, because they are partials of the beat, are accounted for in this grouping. But we oftentimes run into patterns with 16th notes that are grouped with eighth note values. So let's look through our three note patterns that divide out a beat and talk about how we count those and how that looks when compared to our original full four 16th note beat in the center of your screen now. First up, let's look up here in the top left. I already have the counts written in for you, but we've got, if you look at the beaming at the top of the bars, we've got our first two notes are making contact with both beams in the beat, where our last note, or our third note of this grouping, or our third uh, partial here, is only touching one beam, making that our eighth note, and our first two 16th notes. So if we're counting 16th notes from the beginning, we count one E and then we get to our eighth note and get to and. So our partial or our pattern part out of our 16th note group that we are leaving off because of the eighth note length at the end of this grouping is going to be our fourth partial or the uh of the beat. That's why we count this one E and ending with an eighth note that takes a length that would fill the space of that fourth partial. Let's look at a different pattern. Down in the bottom left, we have at the start of our grouping of notes, at the start of our beat, we have a one beamed note. So we're leading off with our eighth note this time. So we have our eighth note and then two sixteenths. So an eighth note being a value that takes us from the downbeat all the way to the upbeat, we see where the partial or the note out of our 16th note grouping that we're skipping when we're counting and playing is going to be the second one or the E of the beat. So when counting this, I would count this rhythm as one and a. 
All right, let's move along one more time. Now this one visually may be a bit more jarring when you give it a look, but let's break it down. It's not that complicated. Our first note is making contact with two beams or horizontal lines at the top of the bracketed set. Our second is only making contact with one and our third is making contact with two. So what we have here is a 16th note and then an eighth note in the second position and then a 16th note to wrap up. So if we've got an eighth note on the E of the beat or the second partial, then that's going to take up the space of the third partial or the and. So we don't have our and in here or our third partial and we count this rhythm as one E, uh. And finally, we'll wrap up and finish out the set with what would definitely take away our first partial of our 16th notes, as we have a 16th rest and then three 16th notes to count this as E and uh. So this system of counting based off of our 16th notes in the center of the page and deciding how our group is performed based off of the partials of our 16th grouping is a good way to stop, think, and break down how exactly we navigate 16th notes when combined with a single eighth note. In future videos, we'll take a look at how to do this with two note groupings in a beat, and even one note groupings when we play with different dotted rhythms and rests. But that's for the next video and not for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.